Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the Mustard Seed. I'm Andrew. I'm Josh. And join us on our journey. It's Wednesday morning. You know what that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your boy back. I'm here. Josh and me back. The new dynamic duo. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. uh, Ryan will be joining us for our draft later via phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, phone call. Um, get some, get some daddy things daddy, you have yeah. to take care of uh, this week. Ben, feel yeah. that? Been been through that a lot. Yeah, I was through that this whole week. Oh, really? I actually had to take off on Thursday because um, Jess wasn't feeling good. Oh man! So then I had to like take care of the boys in the more like take care mm-hmm. of them and stuff. Yeah, it's no fun. It's the time of the year. Yeah, Claire, she's she's seen it at her work like crazy. Apparently, there's a lot of a lot of fevers and, and colds that are going around. Yeah, my and, kids, we they were sick last year in 2021. Like literally every other month, they were mm. sick. Like it was the year of sickness. They got Coxsackie. They got RSV. Oh, they, I mean, they got everything. And they <laughs> got they got it all so bad. <laughs> and so that was an awful year. But luckily, we've been we've been good. We've been, <laughs> you know. We haven't been sick for a little while, so <laughs> yeah. Um, last year at this time, Logan had um, Krug, Croak, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. What is it called? Krug, uh, Krug, Krug, yeah. And he sounded like he had a call, uh, like he smoked yeah, for years. A nasty cough, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Krup, maybe Krup, 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 Krup. P. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my my son, whenever he has to, gets a cold, John, when he gets a cold, he it gets a very croupy cough. It's always it sounds like that. Sounds like he's been smoking for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking the cigars. <laughs> Who knows what these kids are doing in the playroom? I know exactly. <laughs> Turn your back for one second, and there's yeah. John lighting it up. You know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. Um, you know what I was been? You know what I've been thinking about? Because we start, we started our um, our uh, journey on the. Um, I can't say ex- Exodus. Exodus. Yep. Exodus. Mm-hmm. Um, so we started that journey. So on my quiet time, like I've been like reflecting a lot, and I did my quiet time while I was doing uh, my leaves, and I saw mm. you did yours too. Yeah. And it, doesn't it stink? It looks like we didn't do anything. I know. <laughs> I was so no. Uh, two days in a row. So I did it. Uh, I did it yesterday, and then uh, I today I, I bought a leaf blower to use today, and I was so pumped about it. I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this, whatever. And then I spent like literally two hours taking mm-hmm. care of the leaves. And then one gust of wind, yeah. And then the entire lot was covered uh, again. I'm like, screw this. I'm gonna wait until it's done. It, it, by <laughs> this point, it's not. I have one tree that lost all its leaves, mm-hmm. and about 15 that didn't lose any. Right. So right, right, it's right. gonna be like December 15th by the time they fall down and be out there freezing. <laughs> I know it's it's annoying because I I was pretty bad last year. Yeah, I didn't really too. take care of the leaves, and so I was. I feel like I've been slowly working at it all year, mm-hmm. and like now I just I feel like I'm just constantly dealing with leaves. That's the one thing I dislike the most. I think I dislike leaves more than I dislike shoveling snow. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I I kind of enjoy shoveling snow. I I think it's a good workout. Yeah. Um, yeah. So leaves is definitely the worst. I think. You yeah. Know? I was the, like the whole time I was so mad. I was like, this is such a suburban like first world problem like i always get <laughs> jealous too when i see my neighbor has the landscaper that just yeah, gets it done in seconds yeah 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 um but yeah i want to get rid of them cuz um last last year i didn't mm. i waited until the spring right. um because it's the same thing it didn't fall down fast enough mm-hmm. and um we had a tick problem because ticks like come underneath wet leaves right. and like that's how they like i guess are birthed and grow and stuff right, 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 so right. i don't want to have that issue this year yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. I think last summer we sprayed the lawn, mm. so we didn't we didn't have any issues with ticks. But I had to um, spray once every three weeks um, mm. this year. Oh uh, wow, the ticks are uh, pretty annoying. Um, like they scare me. Ticks scare me because like you can get Lyme's disease yeah. or that one with the star in its back that gives you the meat allergy. Forget mm. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's- that ever happened to me. I'm becoming an exterminator, and then my mission is to get rid of every star tick in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd be yeah, yeah. so annoyed. I know ticks are pretty spooky. We, I, I grew up where there was a very common occurrence because you know, growing up on like a farm farmland, mm. we see them all the time because they're always on the cows and stuff. 
Um, so we would, my brother and I, because we would help milk and we would do a lot of brush work and stuff. So we would pull, like at the end of the day, we'd have these massive ones that would be, you know, we'd have to just rip, feasting on yeah, you all we'd day. Have to rip off, you know, that, that night. But luckily, there weren't any of the small like deer ticks. But, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, when I was doing that, I was reflecting, like doing my leaves, and uh, I was thinking too, just like throughout the years that we've been having, and how um, we have a major um, election coming up, and mm-hmm. like you should vote uh, accordingly for your church and your beliefs of like what who's going to help with uh, push the Catholic faith. Yeah. Faith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that is a major part of why you should vote correctly. Um, this will come out probably after the election, but mm-hmm. um, I think a giant uh, tsunami is going to come. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping so. I'm yeah. hoping so. Uh, yeah, I, I would say this is one of the most important elections that we've had in a long time, um, especially for midterms. Because normally I never really think about midterms. Mm-hmm. I never really care about it that much, but... But it seems like everyone is like, okay, we all, everyone needs to vote. We need to go out and that's and the thing. Change Every, the everyone's so sick of what's going on with like how we had to watch loved ones through a glass window, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. slowly passing away and not being able to hug them, right. or just like your kids home from school and all this stuff that was happening is just like uh, sickening. You couldn't go to church, right? You couldn't do any of this stuff, but for the empowered they were able to do like that stuff and like just keep us down there and i I think that it um like we saw in that time that was happening there was people like looking at technology looking at um the science looking at all this stuff that was going on but then as it went on like people started looking for god and like the wrong places like yoga or the stars and that's what they do they were trying to feed that hunger Mm -hmm. of needing god you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah. and they were like doing other things even like an atheist like i believe um an atheist believes in god because when something you know devastating is happening to them who do they call out to right oh yeah always always god yeah no, exactly, exactly. And I think, we're, we're, you know, we're really living in such a really insane time. And I know mm-hmm. the past two years, that's what everyone has been saying. But um, it's just, it's just a weird, I was talking to Claire about this just last night. Like, it's just a weird time to be alive. It is. Because it's like everything around us is crumbling. Like, we're seeing everything falling apart. And everyone's trust in every institution, you know, even in science and like in everything, like everyone, know, like you just can't trust anything anymore because you know, never know who's affiliated with who and who gets paid and who does all this stuff. It's just like, it's just, it's just revealed like how much we truly don't know about the world and about the higher ups and the elites and all this stuff. So, yeah, so, you know, November 8th, hopefully, you yeah. know, hopefully people voted well and went out and Joe, you guys got out there. Joe Rogan said um, that it's going to be a, like the, um, what is that? The shining where the elevators open yeah, yeah and yeah. just the red comes yeah, out. Yeah, he yeah, said, that's yeah. what's going to happen to the United States. That's uh, what yeah, needs yeah. to happen. That's what needs to happen. Yeah. That's what, that's what we should say. So hopefully that's the case. Hopefully that's You've the been case. alone with um, all the abortion bills being passed and all right. that, like right. very strong things like that. Um, we need to put trust in people and make sure like they have our best interest. Right. No, exactly. Exactly. And especially where we are, you know, in the state of New York, like mm. it's, it's that might turn red. I really they're, do. They're I talking think about big I think there's a chance. I think there's a chance, which I have never thought that I would see a red New York. Yeah. Again, me neither. But I'm really hoping so. Cause we def- desperately need it. You know, like I said, um, they did so much wrong to us that I think people are waking up and just uh, like, just the i'm sure other people went through this just seeing your loved one through a window you know mm. dying and not being able to hold their hand is just like devastating i know it's it's awful it's awful for something you know that may or may not actually be as serious mm-hmm. as they were claiming that it was in the beginning yeah. you know which is which is insane but um, um but but yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> again so hopefully it's a sea of red sea of red <laughs> See a red, see a red. But exactly. um, but it's always important to remember that like that God is good, right? And that He's in control. And it may not seem like it at times, but you know, like we were talking about even the last episode when I was on here, um, that like 
you know, it, a lot of bad things happen, but we never know the reasoning behind it. Like mm -hmm. God uses all things for good and for his good. And we just don't understand why he allows things to happen. And so that's yeah. just something for us to always remember about the world. Because it's so easy for us to get so angry about injustice mm -hmm. and about the elites and about the people who are just so hypocritical and evil and blatantly and obviously evil. But, you know, ultimately, you know, we have to trust that God has a plan and that he's, he's in control. He's, you know, he's on the ones and twos. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and that's the one thing, too. It's like... Um, we have to know which one's God's voice. Uh, yeah. Are you listening to your own voice, like the wrong voice, or are you listening to what God wants you to do? You know? Yeah, yeah. You ever have that feeling mm -hmm. where it's like you don't know whose voice it is, yeah, and you're yeah. listening to it? You're like that's why that is, you know, the importance of discernment, discernment of spirit, you know, of, of being able to really reflect on is this really of God, or is this de you know, is this deception? Is it the evil one, or is it just me conjuring up things? You know. Um, so yeah, so we always have to take stuff like that to prayer whenever you're making decisions and thinking about stuff like that. But yeah, man, yeah. Um, I went to a uh, wedding uh, oh, nice. uh, last week and just like um, admiring just the landscape of the church and the different mm. statues. And I just like always like um, love. I love when a church has like instead of Jesus. Um, crucified i love when jesus is like in front of the cross kind of like mm. raising you know yeah, coming yeah, back yeah. Right, right, um right. i don't know if you ever been to holy cross over um in ronkonkoma smith town area up on the hill they have a very beautiful so, uh glass cross and mm. then the blood stains of where jesus was nailed to it and then jesus oh, is wow. in front of it just like oh wow. nice oh, that's great that's great yeah 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 i, I just love church man <laughs> yeah <It's> really too <laughs> it's such, such a great thing sometimes you can really get lost in just like uh not even like the scriptures and the, what the the priest is saying just like just being there and consuming it and just taking it all in and just mm -hmm. everyone saying the our father at once and just looking around looking at the stations of the cross around the yeah, church yeah, and yeah. just like feeling your faith is just like beautiful no it really is yeah it's, it's like total unity it's unity with the people it's unity with you know the body of christ it's unity with christ himself you mm -hmm. know i mean it's 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 a, it's a gift you know i just i love just to even just to sit in, in, a, in a church even mm -hmm. outside of mass like it was it's always such, and, such a gift and you had a, have different experiences from well me and ryan were altar boys but you have different experiences where you and claire sing on sunday so like yeah, just yeah. to like that feeling to get people like singing with you, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. if it's a like really good song, yeah, oh, you know, man, gotta yeah. feel something. No, amazing. it's 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 very powerful. It really is. Just to just to know that you're a part of like people's experience. And yeah, you can kind of aid them in, in their prayer and to really you know hone in on what's happening at mass. Like, it's great. It's great. One one of my favorite mass I ever also served was um, Palm Sunday, and I just mm -hmm. remember the beauty of it. It was it was right after nine eleven like around that time right after the 9 11 time mm -hmm. and i just remember the church was full and right. i was the altar yeah. server with like uh two others and i, I was the cross mm -hmm. and i just remember the walking through the sea of palms mm -hmm. and yeah. then um we didn't sing the normal songs we sang all like america songs like um america the beautiful right, and right, god bless america right. and just i just remember the passion of everyone right. like that's like the time um that was so beautiful in this country of like right after 9-11 how everyone came together yeah, yeah, and just yeah. like was one and just a unit and just like we knew what we needed to heal mm -hmm. yeah no everybody went back to church you know they did they really did and because they, they they needed it and they needed that unity and that, that mm -hmm. foundation something to hold them because you know the, the something stable because it felt like you know there was such a it was such a horrifying time because you never knew like who else is coming? Like, what else is coming? Is it going to be? Are there going to be more attacks? Like, yeah. Um, and so there was this profound fear that I think really turned people back to to the Lord and to Christ because they they're. I think when you're face to face with mortality, like it really pushes you into like understanding like what yeah. this is all about. And that's like kind of what we were saying. Like even like atheists like come back to like yeah. praying to God like when they are about to um, perish sick or, or sick face, or something cease, cease, like that. Yeah, yeah a lot of them find god yeah no exactly because yeah when you're in count when you're face to face with that 
you need that stability to, to, to strengthen you and the courage to, you know, to help you pull through. Yeah. And, and deep down, we all know that this is true. You know, we know that God's real. And, and cause it's written in our, in our hearts, you know. Mm-hmm. And just the proof, like, even in the Bible, the greatest love story ever written with um, God oh, so ever loved the world that he gave his only son exactly. right there. That's all yeah. you need to know about the greatest love story. Yeah. And yeah. someone said to me once, like, about, uh, like, prove God is, is um, real. And, you know, I was, you can't prove in a, te- like, a test tube or just pull right. them right in. Right. All, all I said is look around you. Mm-hmm. Have you witnessed a birth? Like right there. That's yeah. how you know. Have you looked at the beautiful stars? Have yeah, you looked, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The transcendentals, right? So like like truth, beauty, and goodness. Like that's where we truly see God and, and where it's really tangible, you know, where we can really witness him. And you know, I've said this on a past podcast, but recently I've just been really reflecting on beauty and how like when things are good and beautiful, like that's it's God in the mm. world. You know, you look at a beautiful sun, you know, beautiful sunset. You look at the stars at night. You and the moon. You know, you look at your your children. You, yeah. You know, whatever it is, it's just it's beauty, and God is there, and He's present in those moments. You know, and, and even with the song too, as well, yeah. like just the beauty that God like created this person to create just joy and. Yeah. you know everything into this world like when even a when movie it's, person yeah, yeah. when it's ordered you know when things yeah. are, are geared in the right direction and, and you know angled towards god to give him glory i mean that's it's uh man it's everything it really yep. is it really yeah. is but uh i'm glad some good conversation going on oh did we do our dad joke no we did oh my goodness yet. yeah we were so yeah. passionate and, <laughs> and god and everything and that uh, we forgot the dad joke oh, that's um good. Hmm. I'll get ready on here. Do you have one? I have like a a little story I can I can tell. It's like okay. a dad joke. Yeah. Josh is doing the dad joke this week. All right, we're gonna do it this week. All right. So there was this guy, and he was walking through a graveyard, and it just so happened to be the same graveyard where Beethoven was buried. Mm-hmm. Beethoven, you know, the famous you know, composer uh, in the eighteen hundreds. And so he was just walking around, you know, enjoying this this graveyard. And uh, he started hearing this music coming from Beethoven's grave. And so he's going up to him. You know, he puts his head on, on against the tombstone. He's like, what's going on here? This is some music playing. And then he hears it, but he's like, oh, I, I recognize, I recognize that, that, that song. It's, it's uh, Beethoven's Ninth, Ninth Symphony. And you know, some time passes by, and he's still listening. He's like, oh, that's his Eighth Symphony. Okay, that's his Eighth Symphony. I'm listening some more. Oh, it's Seventh. Sixth, fifth, fourth, you know, all the way down to one. And so he's really concerned about what's going on. He's like, I don't, I don't, what's happening here? What's happening here? So he runs over to the priest um, who's there and he says, yeah, this is the, the music is like, I hear music coming out of his, his uh, Beethoven's tomb. And the priest looks at him and says, oh, I know what's happening here. He's decomposing. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good one. I'll just do that for myself, I guess. <laughs> Decomposing. Because it's going backwards. Yeah. Right. I'm glad. <laughs> I like it. I'm glad you uh, said the, the composer, like Beethoven, that. Because Ryan definitely would have thought the dog if he was here. <laughs> he would have definitely been like, Beethoven the dog? <laughs> I'm roasting. I love it. I love it. <laughs> No, that's good, man. That's good. Do um, do you want to try to call Ryan now? We can talk maybe a little bit about Exodus and about sure. do the draft. Ryan, you're live on Mustard Hello. Seed. <laughs> Hello. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Mustard Seed. <laughs> it's a Wednesday morning already. Yeah, how about that, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> Wednesday morning. Wow, this is really cool that this works. Let me just connect to my headphones. Hold on one second. All right. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Perfect. Cool. All right. So we thought maybe we could do like, you want to talk about Exodus for a little while and like how, you, your experiences with it the past couple of days, and then maybe we can do, well, do a draft. Or... We've been drinking this whole time. We never cheers to God. Oh, oh yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I keep forgetting about that too. Yeah. It's like yeah. halfway through my drink. I'm like, oh, wait. Let me cheers. That's the one thing I I normally remember, and I remember to say the Our Father in the shower. 
<laughs> that's pretty good. At least you remembered. Yeah. I I'm... keep forgetting about the shower. Me too, yeah. That's why you've been stinking lately. <laughs> yeah, I actually haven't showered since the start. <laughs> well, it's only been two day, three days, so you're good. So, yeah, thankfully uh, okay. I'm okay at this point. But um, did, um, I actually been enjoying it so far i mean it feels like we're only right we're only three days in so it's kind of early on but uh mm -hmm. yeah it's been good i've been uh enjoying having a little bit of structure again um i feel like it's always good to like know kind of like what is shaping my days in a way and kind of like to get a word like as we have the readings in the morning and everything like that or at least I, that's when i start i start with the readings in the morning mm -hmm. um so it's good it kind of like gives me a little bit of a all right, like here we are. We're we're accomplishing something. So um, it feels good. I've been uh, I've liked the fact that it's more about kind of. I feel like it's a lot of um, being grateful and just kind of like, especially today, right? Like with the light um, going through Exodus at uh, Genesis and just kind of just remembering all the things that you know God has given to us every day, and to have a little bit more of a recognition of like that. I think you kind of talked about that a little bit the other week, Andrew, like kind of giving thanks a little bit more and realizing like what has been going on. So it's nice to get into that mindset a little bit. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that that's what I found too, is it's just nice to have that structure. So I've, you know, the past three days I've been, I've been waking up at like five thirty, six o'clock before the kids wake up and just, just nice to start with the readings and just to kind of pray for 20 minutes with a cup of coffee. Um, and yeah, yeah, I think today the that reading about the light was the one that really struck me the most. And just how Augustine mentioned that, like, you, you notice how, like, the Lord created the light. Like, he didn't create darkness, he created light. And darkness is the absent of light. And, like, it's, it's like such a, a cool reflection on, on that line, you know, and how we can give thanks in that regard. And even with that, uh, just, like, trying to include it, like, see how the scriptures, like, entail into your life of like yeah. what's happening and just like um you could be going like the darkness of mine was uh work and just being exhausted this week mm -hmm. and then just the light is like when i come home and just see my family yeah yeah mm. nice yeah i i agree i liked how they um tied in augustine it seems like he's been tied in a decent amount right and mm -hmm. i think he's been mentioned in all of the readings so far yeah, um yeah which is so cool it reminds me of just what is available to us right like we're going through genesis but we're learning more about the words and everything that is talked about in genesis by people like saint augustine and you know just the different connections my favorite part and i liked how this kind of set the tone for kind of the idea is or just i should say the whole you know 21 days that we're doing this is how it started with the word you know the word became flesh in the beginning of john's gospel and how I mean, we've talked about it before, and that's such a cool thing about like the Bible and our faith is the connection of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, so that was kind of like a neat way to, to start this. And my whole goal with this um, was to see everything through the lens of Christ on the cross. Like, I'm trying to incorporate that into just like my daily life. So I figured, okay, like, we're doing this, you know, readings and this journey, like, what's how can I view this through Christ on the cross? So it was cool to like right away, like you're reminded of in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, right? Like God created the world with Genesis when he started everything and then how Jesus becomes the word becomes flesh, right? So um, it was kind of a neat tie in. Um, and it just reminded me of how we can allow the word to kind of like lead us more and how that can like, form us so like all of our formation and the way that we can live can come from the word so it's cool I, I like that we're getting back into this and i always enjoy having these like reflections to then figure out okay how can i apply this to life so it's what, been good what's been the most difficult for both of you to uh, uh undertake in this mm. i think for me i'm gonna go first I've, josh sure i've, I've found that like I'm comparing this a lot to like the regular Exodus 90 and it's just nice mm -hmm. that it's a lot easier, you know, mm. <laughs> that, there's, that there's a lot less and the, the stuff that, that, that we have to do. It's just a matter of remembering, I think. And, and that's just been my challenge is just remembering 
remembering to say the Our Father before the shower and then remembering to, um, you know, uh, do the cheers. Um, and then, I, I, well, I would think the hardest was just not eating meat today, to be honest, which, which normally, <laughs> you know, normally Claire and I, we, we try to do that throughout the year, but, um, you know, we haven't in a little while. And so just to do it again, it's like, cause I, I love, you know, I, I love food and I love mm. meat especially. And like when I feel like I don't get protein, I just feel like I'm exhausted and I, and I get really crabby and pissy. And, <laughs> and so I just, uh, yeah, I think that was the hardest so far for me, at least was just the fasting today. You know, it's funny you say that because I, I felt that same thing, Josh, where yeah. because I didn't say anything to Veronica and we just made, uh, she just made dinner. We put a, a pizza in and it's a supreme pizza and I'm like picking out the pepperoni and the meatball. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second here. But uh, yeah, I, I can relate to that too with the idea of how, because they're mentioning Exodus 90 through the reflections. Yeah. Um, it does feel like a little bit of a, Yes, like it's not as intense. Like I remember going through Exodus and almost feeling a little bit like, okay, like I got to do this, I got to do this, and less of like, you know, thankful that I'm doing it, you know, right. and you realize after the fact, like all the good things you received from it. Yeah. So this was kind of like those reminders of like, you, you've been formed already, like you're, you're moving in a good direction. Now, like, let's continue this in different ways. Um, yeah, it was getting into the routine. I kept forgetting, right? <laughs> like it just... Even though I read the disciplines and things before the day started, I was every time I was pouring something like I forgot to give thanks and just wasn't thinking about it. Um, and then it was funny. I even felt that I think Andrew, you and I were talking about this. I even felt that the 20 minutes of silent prayer was a little bit of a challenge at first. I didn't realize how much I go through my day like without really setting aside time for prayer. More about like. I feel like I'm good at kind of like incorporating prayer into different moments in my day, but actually sitting down for 20 minutes of quiet prayer, like no music in the background, like no, um, you know, distractions, but more or less just like, how do I really sit down and do that? So Wednesday, it was a bit of a challenge. And then um, on the first day and then the second day I broke it up mm. into two parts. I did 10 minutes in the morning and then I did 10 minutes at night. And then, um, I was able to get those 20 minutes so far today. So it's a, it's all about the process. That's what I realized through Exodus when we did it the first time. It's like, don't get discouraged. And I feel like we can relate that to everything in life. It's like we're striving for, for good things in our faith. It's like, it's okay. You know, you, you struggle to try and get it for, figured out the first time, but then you just keep getting better through it. Uh, so that's kind of my goal is to keep getting better through it. Um, so that's where I'm at so far. What about you, Andrew? What do you think? Um, the hardest for you on Wednesday was the 20 minutes because I feel like I never even have like five minutes to myself but um on yesterday on Thursday and today I was able to uh carve out the 20 minutes I kind of almost did like and I told Josh I was doing it while I was um uh doing my leaves so I was able to like carve out like an hour or so on Thursday and um I would say like remembering to uh read in the morning or read in the afternoon has been like my forgetful thing Mm. making sure i remember to do the uh readings um but everything else i feel like i've been doing i've been like maybe forgetting right before i get in the shot like shower doing the uh our father but doing it in the shower but um the cheersing i was doing good until uh we sat here (laughs) (laughs) Um, <laughs> but go. yeah, uh, the no meat thing, you know, it should be fine. But like, normally, I, uh, I don't have meat until dinner, so mm-hmm. like that's my only thing. And you're you're doing dieting too yeah. already, so I think you have there's yeah. a little more lenience there with you, I think. Yeah. But um, but yeah, fun. yeah, I feel like that 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 20 minutes the first day it felt like an eternity like it really did <laughs> it was hard to kind of get through it i and so i i did the same thing with you ryan i kind of broke it up to 10 minutes uh and that's kind of what i've been doing each, each these past three days i did 10 minutes in the morning and then 10 at night um but yeah it's been it's been good so far and yep. I'm, I'm looking forward to the rest of these days you know the rest of the yeah. 18 days or whatever yeah right we're just in the no, beginning at least, I, uh, at least we're going to top golf on uh on a saturday so uh yeah. we can have meat get some burgers <laughs> that's right we did well there um you know it was cool too and yesterday i realized because i'm i just opened up my journal i've been trying to you 
if you're in, we got mustard seed journal. So I'm using my mustard seed journal um, mm -hmm. to try and like write a little bit more in and incorporate that with like my silent prayer. Um, but yesterday was a good one. I'm just looking back now, it reminded me of the, um, how God, you know, forms our life. Like yesterday's me, uh, reading was like, I, I don't know exactly if I could pull it up. But um, it's just the second line of Exodus. Of Exodus. I always say Exodus because that's what I'm just so yeah, used to yeah, yeah, when yeah. we found Exodus. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was the earth was was without form and void, mm -hmm. and then the spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters, and it was Saint Augustine that they mentioned, and how he reminds us that that relates to our life. Like we're almost formless unless we turn ourselves to our Creator, and it's funny. Like you constantly. At least I know I feel it, and I feel like we talk to each other about this often. It's like our weeks get so busy with work, with life, with being a dad, with all these different things that sometimes it can feel just like chaotic and almost like unorganized, and it's a struggle to try and get 20 minutes of prayer in and, and doing all these things. But then it's like, wait, when I, when I realize, like when my days feel a little bit more ordered and less stressful and more of relaxed in a sense, like it's the days that, I'm turning to, to our creator. I'm turning to Christ on the cross or I'm allowing myself to let him form the days. And it creates just a little bit more peace and a little bit more structure throughout it. So that was a really cool reminder yesterday. And I like that that was in the beginning of this journey for us. Yeah, that's great. And I, I think yeah, there's something really wonderful about kind of breaking it up into the small verses and just really reflecting like even, you know, verse for verse or, you know, a verse here or two verses there. Like there's something really beautiful about about that of, of segmenting it to such a small amount and then really reflecting on, on each word you know it really brings it in like that that the word of god it really you know adds a lot more depth and meaning to just even that expression you know yeah i i agree because sometimes you're reading a, a full passage or whatever it is and you don't really notice how much meaning is in so many different lines and yeah. pieces of it and what you can get from it so it is really cool Definitely. And then with Augustine, like his, his works are just incredible. Like, so if, if people haven't listened to or read some of Augustine's uh, books and things like his confessions is absolutely incredible. Uh, it's just like a, this, you know, st like the story of his life essentially. And he's, he's one of the most beautiful writers I have ever read. I mean, literally I was getting welled up just reading the first two pages of the book. Like it's just, it's just, powerful stuff so I, I really recommend everyone read 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 augustine i love how augustine is very real too like yeah. we've talked yesterday we or yesterday last uh, episode we talked about some saints that are very like you know just like saint therese and they've led these beautiful lives but then saint augustine how he you know was in the lowest of lows or living a life that you know wasn't exactly called to and then how he transformed and that's so powerful too because it just feels a little bit more relatable yeah. even paul yeah 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 exactly and paul literally killing uh, christians yeah. <laughs> yeah to think about that man wow and to be one of the most important saints in, in the church oh. you know <laughs> there's hope <laughs> that's, why, that's why i always say like his um his writing is like showing like you don't have to be that certain way like you can you know be lost and be found again that's why i love paul i mean i would argue that that's the only way yeah you know like if if you haven't really been through the ringer in some way it's it's harder for you to be redeemed i think you know mm. there's there's that, that element of like the, the blessed brokenness of sin how when we fall when we are sin you know act uh, fall into sin you know we kind of need the grace to you know and we recognize the, the need of a savior to pull us out and it heals us, and it, you know, uh, when we kind of look, lean into that grace, and so there's something about that too. Yeah. Um, Ryan, I actually That's had fine. a question for you. When you think of Beethoven, what, what do you think of? <laughs> when I think of Beethoven, um, I think of you the piano. Uh, I, was uh, I definitely think you think of a dog. Yeah, I uh, I told well, a, I told a dad joke this time, and and Andrew uh, threw you under the bus. <laughs> oh no, Andrew seems to do that. I can't be away from the podcast now. <laughs> no, you're gonna I laugh. Saw, I saw an opportunity and yeah, I took yeah, it. You're gonna laugh when you hear it though. It's really <laughs> <fun>. <laughs> 
What what happened? What did you say? <laughs> he told his dad joke uh, about uh, this. Uh, Beethoven, and then right before mm-hmm. he told that he said the the magician magician the <laughs> he um, says co- yeah composer the composer, yeah. and I said I'm glad you specified that. Ryan definitely would have thought you were talking about the dog. <laughs> There was a stretch where we had a Beethoven in the house for a long. No, Bernard. The Saint Bernard. Is that yeah, what that's, what Beethoven, of, that's what Beethoven yeah. is. The Saint Bernard. Well, the Saint Bernard. The, yeah. the movie. He was like their nanny yeah. or whatever the movie. he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow, that's funny. Well, I'm glad you guys told your dad jokes. I was actually curious. It's we funny almost did it. We got look- so passionate about like what we we're talking about, which is actually good in the beginning, and we we're talking all about the church and the red wave that needs to happen, yada, yada. And, uh, and then, I, like, halfway through, I was like, oh, the dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and then Josh told it. It was actually, it was funny. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. That was good. I'm disappointed I missed it. Because yeah. I was actually at the liquor store um, on my way home today, and the guy asked me for my uh, ID. And when I took it out, my Blockbuster card fell on the floor. <laughs> and he said, oh, no, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Love it. Oh, blockbuster. Love it. That. that was that was my dad joke. Yeah, I was yeah, ready yeah. for it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. What are we um, drafting today? What's we're doing a the, draft. We're doing Marvel movies, and I get the first overall pick. Ooh, Marvel movies. So for my first pick, I'm taking uh, Infinity War. Ooh. Wow. Well, so I mean, that's probably number one across the board right well it could be that wait, one wait. Or, that, that's the the first one of two you know, yeah infinity that's, war yeah yeah okay that's right that was that's just so well done reason. um who goes next you and then josh yeah ryan you go i go second yeah. um thor ragnarok i, I mm. loved thor ragnarok i thought that was so funny i love the guy with the Who's the stone guy? And he yeah, talks. Yeah, he yeah. just cracks me up. I, I love that movie. <laughs> That's a good one. Now, Josh, you get two. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna take Captain America: Winter Soldier, and mm. I'm gonna take Endgame. Yeah. Cool. That leaves Endgame me. Endgame is good. I pass it up. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm taking Iron. Oh, it's Ma- back to me. Yeah. Oh back to me right oh andrew <laughs> <laughs> oh wait no i got two yeah right, it's back, back to the right first to right so yeah so it'll so it's ryan snake, right? and then yeah and then and then yeah oh. andrew will get two yeah and um, that goes back to ryan for one yeah. okay yeah for one yep um so i got thor ragnarok and i'm going to pick this is a toss-up for me um i'm gonna say the Spider-Man, the first one, which is what? Not, it's not Homecoming, right? Because Homecoming was two. So it you're talking Spider-Man. Tobey Maguire? I didn't know. No, he's not. Are you not talking a, Tom Holland? You want Tom Holland? I'm talking Tom Holland, right? Because mm. uh, those are those Spider-Mans considered uh, part of yeah, it? Yeah, Homecoming yeah. Homecoming is yeah. the first one. Yeah. Far from home, and then uh, no, way home. no way home. Yeah, so Homecoming. Yeah, Homecoming. Is the, yeah, Homecoming is the first one. Yeah. It was the first one, right? Yep. Yeah, I really like that one. All right, so I'm going to take uh, Iron Man, and then I'm going to take uh, the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Ooh. Mm, that was what I was about to take. <laughs> I love that movie. It's that a, movie good. a great it's one. so good. You said Iron Man, the original yeah, Iron Man? the first Iron Man, yeah. The first Iron Man. The one that, that started the one. whole MCU. Fun fact, I asked Ronnie to be my girlfriend at uh, Iron Man 2. Whoa. At Iron Man 2? <laughs> Oh. Yeah, we were at the theaters watching Iron Man too. So it's a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was too uh, happy bird. about Ronnie saying yes. Yeah, so I wasn't really worried about the movie. Whatever his name yeah. is. Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so for me, coming on the hmm, this is a tough one now because I Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm gonna say so. You took Captain America: The Winter Soldier. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go Captain America: The First Avenger. Nice. The first one. I like that one. I thought that was pretty good. So, okay. Honorable mention: Civil War. Oh, I did my last one. Oh, 
There you go. <laughs> <laughs> just gave me Civil War. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna pick Civil War. <laughs> there you go. We don't have to honor him. And uh, honorable mention, uh, Age of Ultron was good. All the Avengers were good. Oh yeah. 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 The first Avenger. Yeah, the yeah. Amelia, yeah. yeah, the first Avengers was really good. Do you have a, a Marvel movie that you're just kind of like, nah, it wasn't good? Um, like the first two Thors. I. Maybe the second Thor was yeah, that good. I would say the second Thor. I, I like I like the first Thor, and even the second Thor wasn't that bad. It just was kind of boring. Yeah. Like Iron Man wasn't. three. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I love yeah. Iron Man, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't like how they. I didn't it. like the first uh, Captain America. Really? No, I'm not a Captain. I'm Team Iron Man. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's a bad guy. He knew. <laughs> he knew we killed his. Well, parents. how about um, Captain Marvel? Marvel. That was like the worst movie ever, like ever. <laughs> really, was, I didn't see that one. Yeah, I don't recommend yeah. it. It's it's very. Don't waste your time. It's very heavy handed. It's the whole girls' the last, rule, um, boys' drool kind of thing. The last, uh, <laughs> um, Spider Man was good. Yeah. Um, or Doctor Strange, that one was good. Yeah, it was cool. It was okay. I didn't. It was, really yeah, it was much. just the nostalgia of seeing the Spider Man. Oh, the Spider Man. Yeah, yeah I, I love the Noi Home. That one was that one was really good. But then the new the new Doctor Strange. Or I Far mean. From Home. I mean. Oh, Far From Home. Right. Uh, That's the one with Doctor Strange in it. Did you see the last? Oh, that was uh, No Way Home. No Way Home. No Way Home, no was, way the, home. was the last one. Yeah, that one was really good. Dude. <clears throat> yeah, I saw it twice in theaters. Oh, nice. Yeah. Any Ryan? Any that you're kind of like not cool with? What's like your least favorite? I feel like I haven't seen enough to be able to say I don't like it or not. Like I've seen all of the uh, the Internals. the main ones that are ev yeah that everyone's like raving about. Raven. I would say though, Ant Man was Ant Man was okay to me. Mm. I don't know if I'm in out of the norm there. Which one? Ant Man with Paul Rudd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's hitting the uh, hitting the buttons. <laughs> Why did you oh wait, no, we don't want to cheer you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! So many buttons. Uh, there we go. Yeah. That's what we think of your Ant Man take. <laughs> I, it took there me a go. while to find the button. <laughs> Hold on, let me. You gotta go. Uh, yeah, I do actually, but um, I just looked it up. I just googled the rankings. It says Thor: Love and Thunder is the least, or is that just phase? Yeah, that's one Thor, of the new Love new ones. And and, and, uh, yeah, it's like the newest. Well, one. if you look at it the way it was supposed, like so, the movie. I'll say it real fast so you can go. Um, when I saw it, I was like, oh man, that was awful. Then I read some things about it and. The Rock, um, whatever his name is, is the guy telling the story. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so goofy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the way he is. So like, then it made sense. And then I was like, oh, actually, it's pretty genius. Yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I like The Rock, that guy. Yeah. He, well, he 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 directed it, the Taika Waititi. Yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Gotcha. I, 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 got, I haven't seen it, but to be honest, but just from what I've heard, I heard that it was just leaned a little too much on comedy, and there was a lot of like gayness in it. So I'm not really big on that. Well, yeah, the Rock's gay in the end. Yeah, yeah, so that's good. So Ryan <laughs> likes a gay Rock. I'm right. I didn't know that was possible. I know. It's weird. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, go take well. care of your son. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. It's, it's been fun. I'll talk to you. <laughs> I right, take care, Ryan. Be good. This was a good chat. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. We uh, hope you, uh, you know, voted with your heart. And we hope you uh, took something out of this. Uh, please subscribe, like, comment. Um, check out all our other mentions below. Um, check out the poll. Uh, Ryan will do a poll each week of what we do the draft yeah. on and vote. Um, I got a cool thing I was thinking of doing. I actually uh, got, like, uh, one of those fake WWE belts. And um, I glued our logo on it. So whoever wins the poll holds that for the episode. Oh, nice! That's so great. I think that's a good idea. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll have to be if I win it, which, yeah, I'll, probably, which I'll probably win it. So I'm not gonna be. <laughs> you won the last one. Ryan has yeah, to still yeah. do the cookie one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, please uh, like, comment, subscribe, share. Um, check us out on Spotify, Patreon. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff. Um, 
that you can get from us from Patreon between a notebook, a uh, water bottle, we got some um, koozies. Mm -hmm. So you join that, you get that, you get to see maybe some of the bloopers that we got. Yeah. Uh, yeah, check us out. Thanks. Thanks. Peace. Peace.